So welcome to the 500 watt AT Tiny 85 sine wave inverter and this is the simplified schematic. So basically we're going to go through this and, and see how the unit functions at a high level. Okay, so let's start by saying there are basically um, four elements uh, that make this up, right? There's the, um, the DC to AC isolated step up, there's a rectifier, right? There's a microcontroller, and then there's a DC to AC converter. So let's talk about let's talk about the um, DC to AC converter first, right? So basically, this is a purchased module. Um, you can buy this. I'll leave links. Uh, you can buy it at Amazon, or, or um, you can buy it at AliExpress. Um, there's there's many outlets that sell this um, and they run about $20. Um, if you're going to use this as is just to make a breadboard or something, I would recommend you buy it with the heat sink. If not, if you're going to do what I did and make my own board, because I'm going to, I put this into a different housing, then it doesn't matter. You can get the cheaper one without the heat sink because you're going to be just harvesting the parts. Okay. So basically this takes 12 volts DC input and converts it to a 380 volt AC output, a square wave output, and it's capable of a maximum power out of 500 watts. So how does it work? Okay, so basically um, it has a PWM controller, which is this guy which is the uh, SG3525. It has a timing capacitor and resistor. It has a resistor to control dead time, which we'll talk about in a minute. And basically this um, PWM controller provides for two outputs that are complementary to one another. And it is set up in such a way that it would run at a 50% duty cycle at each output. And it runs at basically, it's set up to run at 20 kilohertz with this RC time constant. Okay, now what happens is um, this dead time resistor is so that um, these two signals don't actually come on and off um, at this. They don't come on at the same time. So for, the, for those of you that might be a little unfamiliar with dead time, so if you don't have dead time and you're running complementary, um, it means that when, when the uh, PWMA duty cycle is, is going down, the PWMB duty cycle is going up, okay? And they cross. And basically what happens is they're crossing at some voltage in the middle um, so therefore, it's possible that you could get a cross conduction where both of these are conducting at the same time and you don't ever really want that, right? So when you have dead time, basically the um, PWMA goes to zero before PWMB turns on, okay? And then that's illustrated here as the two complementary 50% duty cycle. So you can see that A goes down and then B comes on after a certain amount of dead time. And then B goes off and then A goes on and so on and so forth. And this dead time usually runs greater than 100 nanoseconds. So depending on the application and, and you know, what kinds of transistors you're using and what frequency you're running at, it's going to determine where you, you're going to set up the dead time. But it's typically greater than 100 nanoseconds. Okay. Um, actually, for this for this setup, it's actually running probably closer to um, a half a microsecond. I think is what I saw uh, when I scoped it. So, uh, like five hundred nanoseconds. Now, what happens is okay. So if we go back up here, and we say that okay when the A output is high, this transistor conducts. So you get current flowing um, through the primary here, okay, and then to ground. And then it's in phase, 
Okay, so it couples right away and you end up getting at the output voltage as a function of the turns ratio. So in this case, it's about three turns to 96 turns, right? So you're getting about a 33, a 32 to one um, step up. So you're going from 12 volts to 380. Okay, and then when the output A goes low, this transistor turns off and after dead time, output B comes on. And then the current flows in this direction through the transformer, okay, providing this negative 380 volt. So you're getting a plus and minus 380 volt square wave at the output here as this is running. Um, now, there is a, a snubber capacitor and resistor that is introduced here. Um, and the reason for that is um, you don't get 100% coupling no matter how well you design or build the transformer. You always get less than 100%. And whatever that percentage less is ends up manifesting itself as leakage inductance. And what that causes is if you put a scope probe on either one of these drains and you were to look, um, you get this ringing that occurs. Okay, and the, the voltage here can build up to almost twice the DC level in some cases. So what happens is, and it's very narrow, it doesn't last long, it's a pretty, it, it's only a few cycles um, and it, it fades off quickly, but it can be rather large. So in order to protect the transistor, they put this snubber resistor capacitor network across the the thing and that helps reduce this ringing to keep the voltage from uh, going up higher than what the Fed is rated for. Okay, so then we come out of this um, with this plus or minus 280 volt square wave and then we get we do a filtering here, full wave rectification and then a capacitor filter to give us a constant uh, plus 380 volts DC. Okay, so that's, that's this section. Next, we look at the microcontroller, okay? And what the microcontroller is designed to do, it's doing basically these five functions. It's gonna generate a quarter sign of 130 elements that go to 255 peak. And remember, that's a, an eight bit controller, so that's why we're limited to 255. Okay, and so it creates this quarter sign array and stores it. Okay, and it's at 130 elements. And then it steps through that array up and down at a 31 and a half kilohertz rate. So basically it's going up and down, up and down, and that's giving you this. Okay, and then so that one full cycle here, if, if you have 130 elements for a quarter cycle, then that means it's 260 for a half or 520 for a full. And the reason I do this is you want, you want to create a decent uh, amount of elements here to make up your sine wave so that you get a, a high fidelity sine wave, right? And the more elements, the better. Um, the maximum amount of memory that this will hold is you can make an array of about 180 um, elements. That's that's as, that's as much as you can make in an AT tiny that other you that any more and you run out of memory. So what I've done to be, to be able to maximize this, I created a quarter cycle and then I run it up and down in software and that allows me to get this. So so I got a nice uh, high fidelity. Uh, the sine wave, right, coming out. And the next is to provide a 60 hertz square wave output that's in sync with these half signs, right? And then it has a, a PW, an 8-bit PWM output that's running at 62 and a half kilohertz, right? And then we perform some voltage regulations. So if you look at this, this is how the modulation works, okay? So the PWM signal looks like this, okay? So when it's zero, it's got narrow pulses, and then as it goes up, the pulses get wider and wider and wider until you reach the peak, and then it's almost at 
and then as it comes down, the pulse is now and now and now until till it gets close to zero and then shuts off. And then on the second half cycle, we invert. Okay, so now it's it, it's it's uh, it's re it's large at the bottom, right? It's large, and then it gets um, smaller. Right? So it's a large here and then it gets smaller, which means at the bottom it's small and gets larger. So it's inverted. And if you were to put, what I did is I hung, a, uh, I took the PWM output uh, and just hooked it up to a, a resistor and a capacitor to filter this. And this is what you get. Okay, so this is what the modulation looks like. Okay, and here's the 60 hertz uh, square wave that syncs it up. Okay, so basically... So now that you have your microcontroller running here, right, the way this now works is this PWM signal is then fed into um, this half bridge, which is the high frequency modulation half bridge. And then the um, 60 hertz square wave is fed into the other side of the bridge. So this 50% duty cycle running is sent into this side of the bridge. So this side of the bridge is running at 60 hertz, and this side of the bridge is running the high frequency modulation. So when you're running when you're running on on this half cycle, which is this PWM modulation, okay, you are getting this blue current flow, which which means that it it's the current is flowing through the inductor load and capacitor and back to ground in that direction. So, and then this LC provides the same filtering as my little RC does here, right? And it gives you the, the blue half cycle, okay? Then, when, the, uh, when it goes to the second half cycle, which is the red, the 60 hertz changes again. Okay, and now the red is on, so this transistor is turned on. Okay, and these two again are PWMing, but they're PWMing in the in, in the inverted mode. Okay, so now current is flowing in this direction. Okay, and now you get the negative half cycle. So now you get this. Um, so this is performing an unfolding. In, a, in the low frequency, and this is performing the modulation at the high frequency. So this is really nice. It works really good, um, and it's very simple. Okay, and then I simply just take a piece of this uh, sine wave, feed it into this optocoupler, which now is going to act as it's, it's running in the linear mode. Um, there's about a milliamp or so of, of current here, and this acts as a half wave rectifier in a sense okay so i'm just getting i'm just getting the blue cycle okay and it and this runs up to several volts and it's used to feedback and and provide information about the output so that it control the amplitude